this year. Thank you. Are you addicted to learning? Can anyone actually be addicted to learning? Well, I was. And the way I found out that was when my friend graduated from med school and he took this picture. I found it really cool and at the same time I was impressive by how much he had studied. Because I know medical studies study a lot, but I wasn't imagining it was that much. I was actually talking to him and he told me that he, together with a few, few of his friends, he put up all those books together for this nice picture. But it still had that curiosity sparked in my mind, and I was thinking, how big would be my pile of books? So I went home that day, I took all the books from the bookshelf, I piled up only the non-fictional books. Back then I did not take the picture, but for today I took the picture, and that's how it looks like. I'm not counting all the trainings I did, all, all the conference seminars, all the online trainings, all the audiobooks, everything, just the books. But uh, still, despite all of that, I was still struggling in my business. I still couldn't make sales, I still couldn't engage my employees so, so they could perform better. But I was keep going, I was keep reading a book a week because I, th I thought like, you know what, someday, somehow, I'm gonna find that little piece of little piece of information that I'm missing and then everything's gonna change because when when you're addicted to anything ju just like learning your brain releases dopamine in, into your system and that makes you feel good and that's why it gets you addicted I got to a point that to work out in the gym I was listening to audiobooks not music like most people do and I was in this struggle because we're every day bombarded by things, articles like this, which says pretty much that the more you study, the more books you read, the more information you acquire, the better results you're gonna get. Like this one, for instance, talks about how was, they made a study with 5,000 people all across Europe, and they realized that those who have read 10 books in their life, non-fictional business books, they were earning about 21% more than the people who didn't. So it leads lead us to believe that, okay, the more books I read, the more success I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna have financially, or the more success I'm gonna have in my career. But if you go deeper in the same study, you're gonna realize that the study found out that those people who have read 50 books, 100 books, 200 books in their lives, they had no advantage than the rest of others. So it's clearly not about numbers. What is it about them? I was struggling with this question for quite a while until I decided to read this book, which is a book from the 18th century, almost 300 years old, and was talking about since even back then, people were so much addicted, focusing on acquiring information to get a better result that they were focusing on acquiring the information, not getting the result. And what I mean by that is one of the big teachings I got from this book was stop reading two, three, five books on the same subject, like very close to each other. You need to give time so you can pick up that information, put it into practice, and get the result. And it takes some time. And I decided to do this, to follow the teachings of this book. And within a few short months, I was reading a lot less books, and I was getting a lot more results in my business. To the point that within less than six months, I was able to sell that business, spend some time with my newborn daughter, and then start a new business, a speaking business. And in less than six months again, I was hired to speak in places like the United Nations. We talk so much here today. And one thing I've learned in this process is that the reason why we don't get successful in whatever endeavor we take is pretty much the reason why we don't learn how to juggle. Like, if we think about juggling, it's pretty simple, conceptually speaking. I just need to throw the balls alternatively in a figure-eight pattern. But if you try to do that, 
you end up doing this, and everything falls. And it's a mess. But if you really want to learn how to juggle, what you got to do is practice with one ball first. And it's boring, it's tedious. You feel like you already know it, because, you, oh, I can do it that once, I can do it twice, so I already know it. And then most people say, forget this, let me go to three balls. And they never learn. But once the people who actually get good at juggling, what they do is once they actually are good at one ball, they don't go to three, they go to two. And they learn this movement, which just teach them how to switch hands easily. And they practice this over and over, even though they already know how to do it, even though they've done it before a few times. And then they go for the third ball. And now they learn how to juggle, right? Not really. Even though they have all the three balls and they already know how to do two, they practice just this movement, which is how you start and how you end. And only then, after you know that, this becomes easy. And, we, and then you can start playing around and do things. But that's not only in juggling. As I've used the example of my friend Martin, in math school, they use the same process. When you join math school, you learn one, two years of preclinical trial uh, studies, which pretty much means for two years they learn the basics, the anatomy, kineology, and things like that. Once they, they know that, they have more three years of clinical studies, which they are more specialized. And once, once they know that, they still have one more year of practical studies until they can become a doctor. And if you want to become a neurosurgeon, for instance, you still have more four to six years of practical neurological training to perform. But if we take a look at the areas that people struggle most in society to, to acquire new skill, you're going to see that this pattern is missing. If we look at someone who wants to go on a diet, what they try to do, they try at the same time eliminate the bad foods, start eating healthy, start exercising, and start drinking more water. A couple weeks later, they fail. Or in sales, for instance, a person joins sales, and that's the reason why sales is the profession with the highest turnover in, in the corporate world today. Because they join sales and they go through a sales training. And they learn like, a lot of different steps. Let's call it four process, four step process for sales. Let's say they have to approach the client, pitch the product, handle objections, and close. And they do that, and they, they learn that, and they try to apply, and they try to improve those four areas at the same time. Doesn't work. What do they do a couple months later? They go for another methodology, a new sales methodology, because clearly that one wasn't for them. And they pick up those, the, this new methodology that has seven steps, and they do the seven steps at the same time. Fail. New methodology, new failure. New methodology, new failure. After four or five times, they think they are not cut out to be in sales. They give up. What do the top salespeople do? How do they improve themselves? They focus on one thing called a sticking point, which means if, I'm, if I cannot approach a person and start a conversation about what I'm selling, I'm not going to focus on all the other steps. I need to first get comfortable, get efficient doing that. Once I'm good at approaching people, I go to the pitch and I improve my pitch. And I don't care about the other steps. I focus only on that until I'm good, until I'm getting real results. Then I go to the next one and to the next one. And the people who actually are successful going on a diet and keeping it throughout the years, they start a diet just exercising, let's say. And they go for a few weeks until exercise is not a chore anymore. Then they go to eating healthier foods. 
They're still eating junk food, but they, they're, still, they're starting eating more healthy now. Then, once they're comfortable with that, they eliminate the bad foods. Then they start drinking more water, progressively, not together. And that makes a difference between something that they know cognitively to something that they actually can apply and produce results in reality, which is what they're looking for. So I know here I'm from a room full of people who really value learning. And you probably, some of you might be in the place that I was in the past. And if you are, I want to invite you to a challenge. For the next six months, you choose one book only, or one training only, and you follow that, only that, until you're getting the results. And if you want to go one step over, and you chose a book, for instance, you stay on one chapter until you can produce what that chapter proposed to you consistently. Not once in a while, consistently. Then you go to the next chapter. And I can guarantee you that in the next six months, you're going to have more results than the past two years. Question now is, are you addicted to learning? I hope you're addicted to learning, because learning is good. But I hope you're more addicted to actually picking up that learning and transforming into reality to achieve your goals in your life in a short future, but starting today. Thank you.